Welcome back to Megazoid's Hut. I know you've seen these before. Um, I wasn't going to do another video, but there's been some updates, so I thought this is enough. Enough stuff to warrant another or final, probably a final video on them. Uh, these are, have changed, actually. These are the ones, uh, these are the finals. Look, the screws are in. Definitely, these are, <laughs> these are finished. Uh, the last ones I showed off, there's a very minor change there, which I just wanted, to, it just didn't quite look right, so I just made a very small change there. Um, the only disadvantage of having these identical ones is I now have to look at the side to see which is which. So that's the Pico 1, Pico 2. Uh, also, the Pico 2, I found out a couple of days ago, does need a pinhole reset in the back. Well, they probably both do, actually, because the only way to reset it completely is to take it apart. So that's a bit of an oversight. But uh, these files are up on Hackster.io. Uh, all the files, schematics, PD, um, STLs. Gerber's uh, and sort of uh, brief instructions. Uh, I mean, I'm, I don't recommend anybody's making to make these things, but and I think a lot of my viewers um, are probably better than me and would just do a go off and make their own thing anyway. That's what I. That's what I believe. There's a lot of clever people out there. Um, but yeah, the, the, to the updates, there's, uh, there's the only things I changed. As I said I made four of these and all. And the only changes I've made recently was just purely aesthetic. I'm, I'm totally happy with that now. Uh, and then the other big uh, update, or the the bigger update, is that uh, Marislav Nemechek has updated the Picolib SDK with um, new stuff, so the new, new emulator. And he's previously there weren't anything for the Pico 2, but now he's... Uh, ported over the uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Color stuff to the Pico 2. And also, we've got NES. So we've got NES stuff, NES emulator now, for both of them, uh, which is fantastic. So some of the... I mean, Game Boy and Game Boy Color games actually work fine on the Pico 2, really, apart from you know, the odd game that was like this one. The odd game, everybody knows, Donkey Kong Country is actually quite hard to emulate and you can really see it on the Pico 2 is absolutely struggling look at that the sounds not even so Donkey Kong Country barely works on the Pico uh, 1 I'll just quickly show you yeah, I'd say it's unplayable uh, but it is the exception rather than uh, so much like tearing and stuff that you just can't really see what you're doing. Look at all that tearing. I mean, it's just, it's unplayable really, or it's its not fun to play. Uh, whereas the Pico 2 with its uplifted performance Come on, it takes a while to get through the menus. You can, already, you can already see that the music's not slowed down at all. And smooth as butter. Well, I, I mean, it's probably not perfect, but it's uh, certainly playable now. Don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I think it's more probably one of the most versatile Pico handhelds out there now because, I mean, you've got things like the Pimeroni, um, what is it, the Pico system by Pimeroni. Yeah, it's a bit a bit long in the tooth now. Works on the RP2040, but it, it never really had much development. And then the Thummy, again, it, it had about, I think there was about 130 games developed for that platform, which is just not bad. Uh, but, you know, no emulation at all, nothing like that. Uh, that was the RP202040 20, yeah, on the Thummy 1. And then the Thummy Color has the, does have the same processor, but we, you know, we'll see. We'll see if uh, the community actually, uh, what, they, uh, what they come up with for the Thummy Color. But uh, as I said, I think these are one of the most uh, versatile Pico handhelds that you can make. And you could, could just make, make your own. You don't need to make my, my stuff. 
Um, you c this is the original schematic, and you could. Uh, this a lot of these original, almost all these components were through hole, so you could actually breadboard it if you wanted to. I think people have breadboarded it. There's uh, nothing stopping you, and then you could, or you could then move on to making your own PCB or your own case. It's, it's a nice thing about this being open source. Anyway, that's it. I'm probably not going to do any more videos on the Pico uh, Pico Pocket. Um, because uh, I want to move on to something else now, or I am moving on to other things now. But yeah, main news is uh, the update from Miroslav Nemechek. Um, so go check his uh, thing out. Links in the description. Okay, thanks for watching.